Check. Well, we are finally at our last freedom of speech case dealing with schools. We've got one more freedom of speech case that we'll, we'll go over, but it doesn't deal directly with schools, but it does get to the heart of the First Amendment. So today we're going to talk about Morris versus Frederick, which was a case decided in 2007, but occurred in 2002. And this actually goes over your teacher's generation. As opposed to Tinker versus Des Moines, where the speech was silent and had a purpose, the speech in question in 2007, or in this case 2002, is a little different. So I was a, uh, I guess I was in high school, I was a junior or senior that year, I don't remember myself. Um, but yeah, the case took place, uh, or the facts of the case took place surrounding Juneau, Alaska, where there was an Olympic torch rally. The Olympics that year, uh, Winter Olympics, were held in Salt Lake City. And as the tradition goes, the torch makes its way around the world from Athens to the host city. And it came through Juneau, Alaska. Uh, the high school there was allowed to watch the rally, so they went on a school-sponsored trip. Um, on the public street. So this is really important to know that this is a public street. And as we know in the past, you know, the public street is quite possibly the most, uh, has the most amount of freedom when it comes to the First Amendment. So that's something to take into consider here. Joseph Frederick, who was a senior, along with a few other friends, uh, were at the town rally for the, the torch. And again, it was during a school, during school hours on a school field trip. And they unfurled a banner that referenced drugs right as the torch was coming through the town, which was a media dream, and that was in many ways their intention to get on the news. So let me show you what they put up. Yes, bong hits for Jesus. You are reading that correctly. This is the actual banner. Uh, the beauty of the internet age is you can see it unfolding. So, <clears throat> again, like I said, while... Uh, Mary Beth Tinker and John Tinker were quietly voicing their opposition to the Vietnam War. The teacher's generation was putting up bong hits for Jesus. Yay, Mr. Giuliano. Like I said, again, it was at a public rally. And it was outside of school, but it was on a school field trip. So does the school in question have the right to regulate the speech in this case? Well, Deborah Morris, the school's principal, certainly th thought so, and she told Joseph Frederick to take the banner down, and when Joseph Frederick refused, she physically grips it from his hands and takes it down, and then suspends um, Frederick for 10 days. Morris argued that the message was against school policy, which prohibited speech that advocates drug use, so the school cannot be in favor of uh, a particular kind of speech, much like in Hazelwood versus Kuhlmeyer, where they did not have to uh, in, endorse all types of speech. More, uh, Fred, Joseph Frederick disagreed, and with the help of the ACLU, uh, American Civil Liberties Union brought the case eventually to the Supreme Court. Um, the questions before the court existed as, does the First Amendment allow public schools to prohibit students from displaying messages promoting the use of legal drugs at school supervised events? And two, does a school official have qualified immunity from damages lawsuit under 42 section uh, U.S. Code 1983 when, in accordance with school policy, dis disciplines a student for displaying a banner in which drug reference at a school and with a drug reference at a school supervised event. So the second one really deals with, can Deborah Morris be held personally liable for taking Joseph Frederick out of school since uh, the right to education has been upheld throughout the courts and when the student uh, has their education to, um, taken away from them, uh, we could argue that they are in due of damages under certain circumstances. That's a whole nother uh, case. So we're really going to be dealing with point one here. But first off, what do you think? Should Deborah Morris have taken the banner down? Or was just Frederick's speech as funny or outrageous or um, obscene or whatever you want to call it as it was, was that protected speech because it was on a public forum or on a public street um, 
outside of school and outside of uh, the classroom. Ultimately, the court in a five to four decision said that yes, the First Amendment allows a school to prohibit speech. John Roberts, uh, the Chief Justice, more or less argued that the message was cryptic and it was more or less saying that take drugs, this is a good thing, do drugs, this is a good thing, drugs are good, all that. Um, and two, the principal does have immunity, so the principal could not be sued personally um, for Joseph Frederick's uh, suspension. So more or less, Joseph Frederick's suspension was seen as uh, the right decision and that the speech was indeed uh, not protected according to the First Amendment. Now, it's important to note that this was a 5-4 decision, which means that one judge decided this case. Uh, it was a very um, controversial case, and at this time in the court's history, it was starting to get a little bit more split, where there's many more cases that are becoming 5-4. Uh, Justice Thomas, uh, with the majority, actually had the opinion that students don't have any First Amendment rights, and he actually wanted to see Tinker overturned. Gives you an idea. Um, the sentencing opinion, uh, according to Justice Stevens, is that uh, the court or the majority in this case, was deaf to the constitutional imperative to permit unfettered debate, even among high school students. And he further argued that it was ridiculous to assume that the message was anything more than a media stunt, that it was not necessarily advocating drug use, it was more to get on TV. And Joseph Frederick had said that that was their intention all along. But even still, it begs the question, you know, um, is discussing drugs outside the realm of the First Amendment. In other words, does the First Amendment even allow for the possibility of discussing drugs? And that the opposition certainly took note of that and said almost that the First Amendment guarantees everything but the discussion of drugs. <clears throat> but there's certainly other implications as well. Um, you know, the biggest implication is this happened outside of school. So can a school regulate student speech outside of school? In other words, if you were to um, encounter a bully and could you bring and it happened outside of school, could you bring that to the school's attention and could they do anything about it? Social media, for example. Student conduct codes also come into question. Uh, can a school regulate uh, the type of behavior a student does outside of the classroom so that it doesn't inhibit the inside of the classroom. And like I said, are drugs an exception to the First Amendment? In other words, can we discuss all things political in schools except drugs? Does even discussing drugs in, imply that, it, or does the discussion of legalizing drugs imply that it's encouraging drug use. I'm just going to leave those questions there for you to think about. But overall, Mary Beth Tinker said this um, in regards to Frederick versus Morse. Remember, Mary Beth Tinker is part of the original Tinker versus Des Moines case. And she said, with that slogan, the bong hits for Jesus, Joseph, or he's Joseph Frederick, proven once and for all that teens, with their creativity, curiosity, and to some outrageous sense of humor, are naturals when it comes to holding the First Amendment to the test of time, even in these times. That wraps up today's lesson. Um, you'll see your homework below. Let me know if you have any questions.